Hello and uh, welcome back to the uh, Citizens Iraq Inquiry. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, very interesting and informative uh, evidence uh, today, throughout today, from Chris Coverdell, who's one of the foremost experts in the law of war uh, in this country. He actually briefed the House of Commons and the House of Lords on, laws, on the international law of war. And uh, James doing a very um, sterling job of uh, putting the government's defence position uh, and making us think about all sides of, of the argument uh, and the discussion. A uh, very important discussion that needs to be continued to, uh, to continue here and internationally and on the internet. We want to see a more peaceful future for all future generations. Um, so now I, I want to uh, just repose the question and pass over to uh, some of our fellow panellists. And the question we, we are asking panellists and we are asking continually online and in this process is we are asking people to make the decision in this court of public opinion if enough uh, evidence of war crimes uh, are available to prosecute Tony Blair and Mr Bush in the Old Bailey and the International Criminal Court in The Hague. So, a question in mind. Pass over to our panelists. Right, uh, right, and down the table. Uh, sorry, Bobby. Um, based on what we've heard today, um, I believe that we should be prosecuting um, Tony Blair and George Bush for war crimes. Um, as a citizen with very limited previous understanding of the law um, and a kind of being forced by the idea that it was always too complex for me to understand as a citizen, and I've had new awareness of laws which just very, very specifically um, outlaw war, um, which the UK has signed up to both internationally um, and domestically. Um, and I believe that although there are many parties who are culpable in what happened in Iraq, I believe that Tony Blair has the highest level of culpability, um, and so therefore he should be prosecuted. Um, I'm still unsure whether I think that it's genocide um, because of the many um, factors surrounding our entry into Iraq, but that doesn't change the fact that it was a mass murder um, and, it, and war crimes to take place. Um, so I believe that we should be prosecuting, um, but also put pressure on the public um, to take action against the government, um, who send us, keep sending us into these wars, and also against armed companies um, who know only make weapons that kill people, because all of these factors are are important in this case, um, but yeah, I believe that we should, should be using some of the very much Bush. Okay, thank you very much, Molly. And uh, to my left, uh, Inglis. Would you like to speak? Oh, okay. Okay, uh, quite, from the very detailed evidence that's been put before us today, my findings from the evidence provided leave me with no other choice but to find Tony Blair and Jack Straw and with 419 other MPs culpable for war crimes and similarly to genocide, and it's my view that this case must be brought before the Old Bailey and the ICC for prosecution related to war crimes, crimes against peace, crimes of violence, and crimes against humanity. It's also my finding that George Bush Dick Cheney should also be brought to justice under the Proxmere Act in the USA. listened to the evidence today and as a guardian of the planet, investigating the competence and accountabilities of, of those concerned with the present management and leadership of affairs of our planet at this time. I've listened to all the evidence um, from both sides of the issues of this war crime and I, uh, in Iraq, in Iraq, we're talking about Iraq today, and I have taken the decision to bring Tony Blair, Jack Straw and all presidents involved in the, um, from the United States to the Hague. Um, for, um, for further prosecution. Um, with, uh, from, from what I've learned today, and I have really learned a lot from sitting in on this, um, um, is that the war is illegal, which I, I didn't know before. I didn't realize how much of this, how, how much, um, how much, how much of a, 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 a crime it was. And, that, um, and so, um, under the UN Charter and the Rome Statute in International Law of Criminal Court um, that these crimes have been committed and they are to continue to be committed and in order to stop this I would like to actually bring, bring
bring these men to justice. And so a genocide, in my, in my, it is my belief, genocide has taken place and continues to take place. And in order to um, address that, we do need to take um, both Tony Blair, Jack Straw, and or President of the United States um, to the Hague. And I would not like it to stop there. I would like it to, to um, involve all those who are manufacturing <coughs> arms and who are complying with this war machine at this time. And, um, and I would also like it to be made clear that, um, it, is, that it should be absolutely within your rights not to pay tax if it is funding the war machine. Um, otherwise, it seems that people are complicit in um, supporting a war that they do not want to support. And they should have the right to not do that by not paying their taxes. Okay. Um, um, in summing up, I think we've had a very incredible, momentous day. Uh, here we are in Shoreditch. Magistrates' Court, which has seen thousands upon thousands of trials, and here we have a citizen's inquiry into the Iraq War and what has happened. We've heard evidence from foremost expert on the laws of war in this country and the defence of the government's position, but also some of the evidence that uh, most moved me was from the ex SAS uh, soldier who very bravely has questioned his orders something very hard for a military person to do, and has come into this court and has said some of the situations he was involved with in Iraq and why he feels that war crimes have been committed. And we have to learn from these situations, otherwise we will be doomed to continue to repeat them. Um, it's my opinion that Mr Bush, Mr Blair, Mr Cheney, uh, Lord Goldsmith, several other members, high up members of our government, government need to be brought to task over this. And this isn't somewhere something these laws wars that can be flouted and that other, you know, we can prosecute people in other countries, but those laws don't apply in this country so as well. Right. They should be equally applied to everyone all across the board, all countries from the east, the west, the north, the south, and all over. Um, there is some legal precedent here. Uh, Spain, I think some judges in Spain tried to uh, take Bush and Blair to court for war crimes, and it was got a lot of the way there, but then was pulled back on. But Malaysia just recently convicted Tony Blair and um, Bush of war crimes. And if uh, Mr. Bush or Mr. Blair go on a visit or safe visit to Malaysia, they will be arrested for war crimes. Um, I think what we've heard today, uh, I think as well as those leaders of governments, I think there are some captains of industry. I think we need to severely be questioning uh, the heads of Shell, Exxon, and BP, the oil companies, in two years before. This actually encouraged our St. Martin, the Ministry of Defence, Economic Department, whatever, but we needed to go into another sovereign country and bake them, and uh, there's a question about oil as well as all these things. I think basically, in summing up, um, Chris, Mr. Chris Coverdale has outlined that there was motivation and intent that um, we have committed war crimes in these other countries. Which of these war crimes, whether it's genocide, oppression, or murder, or terrible of things that have been done in our name and some people in this country have resisted and taken direct action but many of us have been passive observers seeing what's going on and nearly a million people have died nearly five million people have fled men women and children have been blown apart because of the actions of our government and certain companies that persuaded them into those actions and i think really we do need to continue to collect the evidence and present this in full form before initially the Old Bailey, and then on to the <coughs> criminal court in The Hague. Because unless we learn these lessons from history, then we're doomed to repeat it. And what we actually need is an, an end to war, and to realise that other worlds are possible. And to start, only when peace comes about, we start the massive job of repairing the environment for future generations and getting on with those solutions. So, uh, in summary, yes, I think we should be going to the Old Bailey, and to the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Uh, war crimes have been committed. So just to go to this assembled court here now, we've heard some up from some of the panellists and there's more stuff I think going to be put on the website and things from the other panellists. Um, we'd like to ask everyone in the court to, to vote with a show of hands. Firstly, all those in favour of prosecution and then all those against 
prosecution. So, as I said in the script there, first of all, uh, all those who are in favour of uh, prosecution for war crimes for Mr. Bush and Blair, for the Old Bailey and the International Criminal Court, hey, please keep your hands in the air for a minute just so the assembled cameras can go around and see. I think we've got a Prosecution. Even if it's you, I'm check it out. So I think that's nearly what you'd call a majority of the sentence, um, uh, Okay, please keep your hands in the air so we can pan around for the international viewers all over the world that are currently watching. There, I think you have a large, or a total, near total, apart from one person, possibly majority. But we would just ask, and also the other, uh, once we've got that on camera, okay, pan around. And so after that, I would like to ask who. Um, all those against prosecution of uh, Mr. Bush and Blair for war crimes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right, well, there we have it. I think that's the majority for prosecution and an abstention from the defence. Uh, that's very clear. I think these things will be proceeding. Um, uh, I've been informed that the online poll is uh, yeah, it's coming in coming in at the moment and still being counted, so we will get back to you uh, with the results from the online poll and the voting. Um, so I want you to tell me how I think the website is called occupyjustice.co.uk, is it co? Yeah. occupyjustice.co.uk, we will be putting up further evidence, video clips stuff from this trial and any other questions, answers or input, <laughs> feedback is most is very welcome. So just in summing up, uh, I've been asked to explain that the next steps, <coughs> very serious and very important steps, some people have been trying for 10 years to uh, get to court um, Next few steps are we will hand over all the evidence and the videotapes of the hearing to the War Crimes and Crimes Against Humanity unit, unit at Scotland Yard. Number two, we will also hand over the evidence and videotapes to the prosecutor at the ICC in The Hague and ask them to initiate criminal proceedings against Tony Blair and others for international criminal court crimes committed against the Iraqi people. And number three, we will also contact the US Embassy to ask them to pass on the evidence to prosecuting authorities in the USA for them to initiate proceedings against George W. Bush, Dick Cheney, and others under the Foxmire Act. <laughs> and um, just finally, uh, a couple more points. Was, uh, we've been asked any more feedback, any more evidence, anybody who'd like to feed into this whole process please uh, get in touch through occupyjustice.co.uk. You can also get in touch through uh, Vision on TV. TV or uh, through live stream LSX and through Occupy London uh, and those websites. Um, I've been asked to thank everyone for their involvement and remind everyone that this was the first of several tribunals which we intend to run over the coming months looking at the legality of the Libya war, the legality of the Afghanistan war, and the role of the Attorney General in deceiving the armed forces <coughs> and the public over the legality of war, as well as many other examples of corrupt practice that are of concern to the Occupy movement. Thank you very much. Everyone. Thank you.